Hey everybody, welcome back. We're here again at GR Research with me, Danny Ritchie, and today we're going to be talking about um, a lot of things uh, that are mostly centered around frequently asked questions, and I'm going to get right to it with some of my most frequently asked questions this week and last week. It's all been centered around, can you ship to wherever you are? Uh, can you ship to Germany? Can you ship to New Zealand? Can you ship to Australia? Do you ship to the UK? Yeah, guys, we can ship anywhere. We can ship anywhere the mail runs or UPS runs. And we get a great rate with UPS's expedited services. And we send stuff out all over Europe and all over the place every week. So yes, we can ship to those places. The next question I get is, what does it cost to ship a XLS Encore to Germany? Well, that's a good question, but I can't answer it until you give me an address. I need at least some type of an area code that I can drop into UPS World Ship, and then it'll spit me out of what it costs to ship it to you. And I'm going through, oh man, lots and lots of those. How much does it cost to ship this to here or to there? I don't know unless you give me an address. You give me an address, man, I'll get you taken care of. I'll get you a price. If it's great, if you're good, psh, out it goes. We can ship this stuff out anywhere you are unless you're living in Antarctica or something so no issues there so those are my frequently asked questions for the day uh, this little jewel set next to me here I had opened up and I was taking it over to the house to put it in my system and it just happened to be sitting here on the work table so I thought I'd just drag it over here and let you guys look at the gorgeous work my old buddy Gary Dodd used to do this was one of his balanced power supplies that he made for me. It's got quilted maple, high gloss, chrome top. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you see some of Gary's work out there, some Dot Audio stuff coming up for sale, it's all high quality stuff. Jump on it if you can. Um, it's well worth it. That's the only reason that's here. I just wanted to share it with you guys today. Now, get down to business a little bit. XLS Encores. We've been shipping a ton of XLS Encores. They've been moving pretty well all year. And then recently, Ron Brene at New Record Day uh, did a little review on them, and that gave them an additional pop. And so we've been shipping out a lot of those things. Uh, we probably shipped out uh, 12 or 15 of them last week, and there's about 20 boxes on the floor back here next to me that are sitting here waiting for inductors to show up so that those can all go out the doors. So I've had a lot of questions that have been centered around the XLS Encores. Um, a lot of you guys asking me the same questions, so I'm going to try and tackle some of those. Um, I get a lot of you guys asking me about the wiring, a lot of you guys asking me can I do a video build on those, and all that's a great idea. At some point I'd like to do a video build on all of the kits we offer, so you can click on it and kind of watch the whole process. This one is an easy one, and um, Peter sent me a flat pack on this stuff. It's been here for a little while. His CNC work is beautiful. Everything fits like a glove. Um, he offers this CNC cut flat pack for $140 plus shipping. And it makes putting the whole thing together really easy. Um, all of it just fits together neatly in these little joints that he's made. He's got braces and stuff that drop right into the little spots that are CNC cut out for them to fit into. Made it real easy. Uh, but I'm going to try and do a build up on this thing. I, I don't know where I'm going to find the time because we're busy up to our eyeballs right now. But I'm going to try and do an XLS Encore build. I'm going to show you the uh, cabinet and how it all goes together. Uh, I'm going to just briefly cover that because Peter has covered it extensively in some of his videos. He did a great job with it. Um, I'm going to do um, a crossover build, kind of show you guys how to put the crossover together. I'm not going to go into in-depth on every step-by-step -step, uh, bit of the upgrade or a bit of the build uh, like I did the Klipsch RP600 upgrade. Uh, I'm going to show you, though, what you need to know and try and help you guys with it. Uh, another question that I get, and I'm getting these a lot, is uh, how does the XLS Encore compare to this or how does it compare to that? And how does it compare to the Klipsch RP600 that you upgraded? And, um, guys, it, it really doesn't. Um, it doesn't really compare to your common budget level speakers at all. It's kind of in a different class. 
Um, it's kind of like um, asking me about the cars that I drive. We've got a Suburban that we use to haul and move everything. Uh, my wife and I use that thing to death. Uh, I've got a Corvette in the garage that I take out on nice days. I take to the track. I do some drag racing with it. And then we've got two smart cars that we use as beaters. We run all over town in those things like we're driving little go-karts. They're fun. They're cost efficient. I mean, cheap to maintain, cheap to operate. Fun cars. But would you ask me how they compare to my Corvette? Mm, not really. Not really. It's a different class of car. Everything about that comparison is not a comparison. It's completely different. And it's kind of the same way when you're comparing a really high-end uh, kit to a completely assembled budget-level product that you would buy in the stores. Even in Ron's review that he just did, uh, and Ron doesn't make a lot of comparisons. Ron is very diplomatic. He, he, he calls it like he hears it, and he's good at what he hears. I mean, he's got a good ear, and he really tells it like it is. But you don't see him going out and making comparisons of how this fits to the market compared to this, 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 and this. But they, he lets you guys come up with that on your own. He lets you guys make your comparisons just like everyone else does. Um, I know it'd be easy if we just said, here's the best. Here's the second best. But this is all subjective. Uh, Ron did make some comparisons in his review, though. On, ironically enough, he compared the sound of the XLS Encores with the servo subs that he set them up with to the sound of some of his open baffle speakers that he's had around there, the like the an Exotica and the Spatial Audio uh, Sapphires, I think they were. And it's it's an honor that to me that he, he would put a, a stand-mounted speaker into a category with some really nice expensive open baffle speakers and talk about them in the same, in the same breath. Uh, that's crazy. Um, totally different class of speaker. The fact that the performance level is that high is, is, that's unusual. Uh, I mean, that's, I appreciate the, the comparisons, uh, but that's not really a fair comparison, I know. Uh, all of you guys are asking me, how do they compare to other budget level speakers or other, I shouldn't say budget level speakers, other stand mounted speakers? Because this really isn't a budget level kit. Certainly you can get into it for 249 bucks. You can build the base model. That is getting into it on a budget level. Uh, but for, I think, $460, you can get the full-blown version with sonic caps, Mills resistors, tube connectors. I mean, you're building a hot rod speaker here. So how does that compare to speakers that you would buy commercially in the market? Well, I'm going to give you some legitimate concrete comparison that you can make. A reference point for you guys who keep asking me, how do these compare to this or that? Think back uh, quite a few years ago, uh, Usher Audio had a speaker that was a stand mount speaker. It was called the BE718 model. It was also known as the Tiny Dancer. And they sent that speaker around to every magazine. And every, every magazine that reviewed it gave it some kind of award. Stereophile said it was Class A recommendation. You name it. Um, it was kind of touted as one of the best stand mounted speakers for under 10 grand. That speaker was $2,795, I think. And it set a benchmark for stand mount speakers. Now, why do I say that speaker? And, and, and why would I compare my product to someone else's product like that? Um, it's easy, actually, for me because I did all the design work in that speaker. And that Usher B718, I designed the crossover that's in there. I picked the parts. It was the same parts that we offer in the XLS Encore. It was all Sonic Caps, Mills Resistors, Ursi's, all Aircore uh, XQ inductors. The only difference is with our kit, you can get tube connectors. You couldn't get tube connectors with the Usher model. But the performance of those two models, those were pretty close. That's a good comparison, and I can say that with conviction. I did the work on it. I know if you look at all the reviews, it may not sound that way. I may, I may look like a little, a little footnote at the end of the reviews. They had a marketing campaign. They wanted to say their speakers were designed by the world. Mr. Sai did all this work on these high-end drivers over in China. And then Joe Diopolito was involved. And then it came to me. And so all these designers had this hand in mixing up this recipe and whatever. 
uh, marketing campaign they wanted to do on that. The truth of the matter is Jody didn't have anything to do with it. I did the whole crossover on that, everything. All of those models that came into the U.S., that was my design work. So I can very confidently say that the XLS Encore is right at that level. I did both work. I, I, I did both of those models. So I'm comparing my design work to my design work. So I'm not picking on someone else or trying to make a comparison to somebody else's product. I did both of those things. So there's your benchmark. There's your point of comparison. I hope that helps. Uh, give you some reference you have to keep in mind. It's hard to compare a kit to a finished product. If we offered this in finished form, it would be a lot more expensive when you factor in cabinet work, assembly time, boxing, packaging, all of those things make the, the speaker a lot more expensive. This would be right up there in those price points with the Usher BE718. But instead, you're getting all the parts, you're getting the drivers, you're getting all of our support and everything you need to go build it yourself. So you're putting in your time, your labor, and your fun to get to build it and to do something for yourself. And then in the end, have something that's at a much higher level than the comparative speakers that you could buy in finished form that are built to a price point. Anything in that $1,000 and under range, those are all built to price points. There's no high-end parts in there. There's not high-end drivers. A lot of them you may find are very good for the price points, but it's not the same thing you can't really compare it to a kit. So there you have it in a nutshell. Last thing I'm gonna cover this week's pick for um, performing artists, a YouTube performing artists that I wanna point out. This is a family band, and I know they've already gotten a lot of uh, exposure. They got a lot of views. They got a lot of uh, subscribers. They're already doing real well. They certainly don't need my help, but a lot of you audiophiles I've never seen these kids before. It's a family band, kind of like the Partridge family. Um, a whole family of kids, and they're really, really good. And you guys got to check them out, and I know you'll appreciate them. The band is called Lilac, and I'm going to send you a, or send Ron a link that he can post there at the bottom of this video, and you guys can check it out. That's it for this week, and thanks for joining in. Thanks for watching. We appreciate all the orders, all the business. Thank you guys very much. We're going to continue to work hard to try and give you guys high-end, high-quality performance at a budget-level price with these kits, with these upgrades. Try to make your listening experience even better. That's our goal. That's all for this week. See you guys next week.